Righto, Teleode champs, this is Intel's new 13900KS. Yes, KS, not the K, and I'm going to tell you why this is a much better part than the K part, which is the 13900K, which I actually had in this system before I put this KS part in. If you want to see the specs of my system, look in the description, but basically it's a 13900KS with an RTX 4090. So in this video I'm going to show you how many watts the K part uses compared to the KS, and it's going to probably surprise you, there's a big difference here. All right, so I'm running at six gigahertz. You can see there, I haven't overwhelmed my cooler. Oh, did he spawn right in front of me? That is just nuts. That is just crazy, yeah. Not really playing the game, I'm just really testing the CPU. So, oh, you can see there, six gigahertz, no problem playing this game. I can play Warzone like this. The only problem is cooling it. Uh, that's the only problem, right? So you can see there, we're on the edge of being too hot running 200 watts my cooler can do about 200 watts um, and then it sort of gets overwhelmed as you can see here it's pushing nearly 100 degrees running at that sort of uh, 200 watts there so that's how much my cooler can do about a little bit over 200 watts so here's the deal ks versus k there's a big difference a big difference i cannot run six gigahertz straight out of the box with the k all right so the K part, my K part, I can only run at 5.6 super stable. If I could delete it, I could run more. I could actually run it at 6 gigahertz, add in some voltage, but I couldn't cool it down. And mine is just stock. There's no liquid metal. It's not deleted or anything like that. It's just running stock, right? So for me, I can only run it at 5.6 gigahertz. I'll get into some gaming in a sec. So you're not going to believe the Delta. Have a look at this. This is the K part. And what you can see here, forget about the FPS. What you can see is we're using about 160 to 175 watts, right? 5.6 gigahertz, which is what I run it at. Because when I play Warzone at 5.6 gigahertz, it'll reach 100 degrees after, you know, an hour or so. So, yeah, that's why I run it at 5.6 and it's stable at 5.6 on the stock voltage now i can go to 5.7 but it overheats too quickly and yeah every now and then it would crash so it's 5.6 perfect right if i could add some voltage delete the k part i could get higher frequencies right but stock how it is 5.6 is how we roll and you can see there it's using 165 to 175 watts so let's count this down six gigahertz i'm running at now all right six gigahertz i'm only doing 184 watts 184 right 190 watts 200 watts <laughs> but you can see there it's not that much more now let's go down i'm going to go in the settings here apply no undervolt anything like that we're just going to 5.9 remember up to 175 sort of watts 5.6 with the k part all right so now what are we using 185 watts so still oh, maybe 10 watts more than the k part at 5.6 all right so now let's drop that to 5.8 there you go now it's using less watts than the k part all right using less watts it's at 160 and it's still 5.8 so it's doing 200 megahertz more and using less power. So I want you to think about that for a sec. Let this sink in. We're running less power and doing 5.8 gigahertz. So 200 megahertz faster using less power now, right? But it gets better, right? Let's go down to 5.6, which is what I run my uh, K part on. So I run it at 5.6 because it won't overheat at 5.6 and it won't crash. So it's super stable like that. I could run it faster. Believe me, if I could delit it and cool it, I could run more than 5.6, no worries. But I can't because just the thermal envelope of my cooler and also it's not stable. I have to add some more voltage if I want to go over 5.6, right? So now we're running at 5.6. We're using 140 watts. 140 compared to 175 how did he not blow up are you serious he copped an rpg okay no worries but yeah so 140 watts you can see there it was using 140 
140 watts, 136 watts compared to 165, 175 at 5.6 stock voltage. That's like a 20, 25 watt delta at the same frequency there. We saw using less watts, I could run at 5.8 compared to 5.6 on the K part, right? Now, it gets better. All right, so I said mine's stable at 5.6 at the stock voltage, so I can't add more voltage because it will overheat. So, let's get into here. I can run this minus 100 millivolts, okay, so minus 100 millivolts at 5.6. Now, we're running at 110 watts, okay, compared to 175, so 165, 175 watts. That's what was running before at 5.6 with the K part. The KS, I'm running at 110 watts. That's a 50 watt delta. 50, 60 watts delta. All right, you can get on a benchmark and go, ah, oh, it's not that much faster. Okay, it's not. You know, most of the time in gaming, it's not going to be that much faster. But if you're telling me I can run at the same frequency, 5.6 is what I do with my K part, and I can run this at 5.6 using 50, 60 watts less. Mate, that's a huge difference. Huge difference for quality of life, having the fans running lower, it's going to run cooler. And the fact that I can just out of the box run 6 gigahertz, but I just can't keep it cool enough. If I could delete this, I could run 6 gigahertz straight out of the box. No voltage modification and it'll be super stable no problem so there is a big difference between the k and the ks um yeah just thought i'd share that to you might not show up in the benchmarks but when you consider that uh, you know there's a 50 watt delta at the same sort of frequency 50 60 watts delta and being able to run six gigahertz straight out of the box um oh i don't have a bomb <coughs> Should you buy the 3900K, yes, over the K part? Well, I think, yes, it's $100 more. Why not? You just get better performance. It's going to be able to run cooler at the same frequencies. On the benchmarks, it's not really going to show up that much, but it's a quality of life thing. Out of the box, you're going to get 200 megahertz faster. Well, that's basically what I had. 6 gigahertz should be easy to achieve if you have the right cooling. And I mean, there is silicon lottery in that, but from my sample, it looks like it would be easy if I could call it. And the fact that at the same frequency, 5.6, which is the max where I could run the 13900K app, the KS runs at that same frequency using, using 20, 25 watts less. And if you undervolt it, like 50, 60 watts less. So yeah. It may not show up on a lot of benchmarks, but there is a lot more potential in this chip, and I reckon it's worth that extra 100 for me, for you, maybe not. Upgrading, certainly not. Do not upgrade. It's not worth it in that sense.